Hey everybody, uh, I'm getting to be in a bit of a time crunch on my uh, retouching schedule, so I'm going to make this a quick one today. Uh, this is a tutorial about the eyedropper tool right here. Uh, hotkey is I. Um, it's going to be a super useful tool. Uh, a lot of you all have had color, uh, color questions um, about sort of how to... Uh, you know, manipulate color and have color feel more natural, dealing with color casts, additional lighting, you know, interior lighting, mixing with outside lighting. Um, this is a very useful tool to help you kind of confirm what you're doing uh, rather than just using your eye. Um, and then um, it's also a very useful tool when it comes to uh, really uh, getting a color correct for um, you know when you're reproducing a color with a color layer or something like that. Um, so again, like I said, hotkey is I here. Um, also, it's right over here on your bar. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my video capture so you all can see my screen right here, right? So today we're gonna be primarily focused on just the eyedropper tool and none of these other guys that are underneath uh, the I hotkey. So, um, Clicking with your eyedropper tool is just going to give you the color that you've uh, that you've targeted here with the with the cursor. Okay, uh, if you hold uh, Alt or Command here, depending on your or Alt or Option rather, depending on your um, uh, operating system, right? You're going to get it's going to change from your foreground color to your background color. So left click with your uh, with just a plain left click or a um, Option left click is going to give you your background color. Um, another super useful thing you can do with it is uh, if you hold shift and click, it's gonna give you uh, an anchor point. If you go up to your info dialog box over here on the right side of my screen, I've got it hidden behind my navigator. Um, it's gonna give you this point number one, which is gonna tell you that right now we have 127, 124, 122, a very middle gray, right? It's a very slightly warm middle gray, a little bit less blue, a little bit more red. Um, you, we can hold shift again, put another one over here. You can see again, this is almost perfectly neutral. This um, this white wall over here, we can compare that to the exterior, which is at one, 246, 247, 248. I almost never let any part of my frame hit 255, 255, 255, um, because I went to a fine art school and all of the work I presented was prints. And if you if you all have made photo prints before, um, you know that when you have an area that's white, um, uh, particularly if it's on the edge of the frame, it actually doesn't take any ink, right? So you get a different surface quality uh, to your paper. So that's going to happen if you're if you're getting it published in a magazine, if you're making fine art prints, anything like that. It's going to be important that even if you just bring it to 253, 253, 254, something like that. Um, the printer is going to lay down a little bit of ink and you're not going to get when you when you're looking at a big print on a wall and uh, there's a white part that touches the edge you won't have this weird uh, border that suddenly fades to a different texture and then back out um, hot tip from from college there for you guys um, but uh, yeah so you can you can see over here uh, your uh, your points are all here then if you you know if you make a uh, curves layer on top of this it's going to then give you a second set of numbers okay so your, it'll tell you what your uh, original numbers were. Um, you can see the numbers on the left aren't changing and the numbers on the right are changing. So that's giving you a, um, a real-time you know, feedback of, of everything you've done. So if you're trying to balance something, you can say, oh, every, all these points in the image look a little bit too yellow, right? And if you wanna add a point or two of blue, you can watch the, the, the blue channel change here without the others changing, right? So uh, I'm gonna throw away that curves layer. Super handy. When it's time to get rid of them, you can do one of two things. You can hit shift again and just drag them right off the image. Then your, your second one becomes one, your third one becomes two. Or you can go a little bit longer to the color sampler tool and hit clear all. That'll just get rid of all of those for you. So, Okay, uh, the next thing we need to talk about is the sample size. So this is the most uh, important thing uh, to learn about the eyedropper tool is, is sample size here, okay? Um, if you're, the, the most common usage for, for the, um, for the eyedropper tool for me is when I'm making a color layer, right? So let's just say I'm gonna make a new layer down here, change the layer property here to color. And right, so let's just say we want to warm up this wall a little bit, right, or cool it down or what have you. Um, what we would do is, you know, we could either select a color for it, 
we could start by selecting you know here and if we wanted to say warm it up we could warm it up a little bit here right uh, we can any number of ways we can, we want to pick a color but the most important thing here is if I zoom in all the way to pixels right you can see that on a one pixel to the next basis we actually have a lot of variation so if I go back to my eyedropper tool here and I change my 11 by 11 average to point sample you can see if I pick this versus this you see how different that color is in that little circle it's huge um, so you know depending on exactly which pixel we click we're gonna get a totally different color. It might be way lighter, might be way darker. Um, it's it's just something that's super important, right? So generally with the current camera I have, I like to be around an 11 by 11 average. So it's going to take, you know, no matter where we click on here, it's going to give me essentially the same color because, you know, it's going to be taking 100 pixels and averaging them, right? rather than just taking the, the sample of one. And same goes with, you can see why I don't want to do a five by five or a three by three, because you know this three by three is going to be very different than this three by three. And this five by five is going to be very different than this five by five, even though that's all on essentially a postage stamp, right? On that wall. So um, that is the most important thing that I can teach you guys is to make sure you pay attention when you're, um, when you're using the eyedropper tool to the uh, 11 by 11 average. Another helpful thing to know is that, you know, you can sample all layers, current and below, current layer, et cetera, all layers, no adjustments. There's all these different things. I'm always sampling all layers because generally what you're seeing with your eye is all layers. Every once in a while, I'll change to current and below if I'm trying to target a color that's, um, you know, if I go down through all my, all my layers here, um, if I'm trying to target a color that I've already made an edit to, right? If I'm like, oh, the original wall color was actually better under these curves layers, I'll go down to current and below. But more likely, I'm just gonna quickly, you know, drag down and turn off my other layers, and then just pick the pick the color I want with all layers selected. So um, that's gonna do it for today, you guys. I'm in trouble. I have to travel to Georgia three times this month. I'm going to Italy soon. I'm going to San Francisco. I have like. 32 days of photography booked before the end of June right now with an AIA deadline and it's gonna get ugly real fast so I'm gonna try to keep these coming but I can't make any promises um, yeah it's it's a good problem to have but uh, <laughs> winter is over spring is here and uh, everybody woke up so that's how it goes every year I'll keep them coming thank you <laughs>